Now, you probably didn't wake up this morning thinking you need a little death in your life, but that's precisely what our game needs. We've got some ability to deal damage, but we can't actually make the enemy die yet at this point, and so that's where we're headed in this video. We'll also add item drops and some cool visual effects. Let's get started. But before we get to any of the coding, I want to create some effects, specifically the ability to send some particles flying into the sky when the robot dies. So let's go to Effects, Particle System, and we're going to get this beauty right here. I'm just going to move it off to the side so we can see what's happening. Now first off, I'm just going to shorten the duration to one and a half seconds, and eventually we'll want to turn off looping so that it doesn't last forever. However, for testing purposes, it's helpful to just leave it on. We're going to introduce a start delay as a random between two constants. We'll put it between 0 and 0.1. I like a certain degree of randomness, so we'll make a bunch of these other ones also random between constants, working with a start lifetime between 0.5 and 1.5, and a start speed between 5 and 15. Actually, let's just make that 10. We want these things to spray quickly. Our start size will randomize between 0.1 and 0.3. Let's get our rotation between 0 and 360 so that these things be facing any direction they want. And where it's really going to start to look like something is when we add a little bit of gravity. I want these to drop down to Earth quickly, so I'm going to give it a gravity of 5. At this point, we can open up a mission. This is really going to make a big difference here. I'm just going to add one burst to the list. Let's give it a value of about 60. That way we get a nice big explosion there. And we'll also just take the um, rate over time down to zero so that it's just that explosion when the enemy dies. And already this is starting to look pretty fun. You can play around the shape of the emission if you like, but I'm just going to leave mine as a cone. At this point we can enable collisions as I want these objects to actually interact with the ground when they hit it. We'll go to world type. Again, we want them to interact with the world around them. And we can change mode to 2D. All right, we can dampen this effect just slightly with 0.5. We want to leave a little bit of bounce. And otherwise, we can mostly just leave these factors as they are, as this is starting to look pretty good. All right now, in our renderer, I have mine pre-selected to Sprites Lit Default. And that's just because I want my objects to interact with my lighting effect. You could just use a regular Sprite Default if you don't have any light in your game or anything like that. You can also play around here a little bit with your sorting layer if you want, if you want them to appear in front or behind of different objects. For the moment, I'm just going to leave mine at zero. And one big change that's going to really affect things is adding a texture for your animation. So let's head to Texture Sheet Animation. We can switch this to Sprite, which will allow you to put your own sprite in here. I just have a um, fairly simple robot particle, which really is just kind of a vaguely rectangular shape that looks like our robot and is colored the same, so that each of these objects is just a larger or smaller version of that. With that done, you can open up your particle system, and now we'll just turn off looping. Our particle effect is ready to roll. With that particle complete, let's rename it to something that makes sense. I'm going to call mine Robot Death Particle. I'm then just going to come down to my files here and create a new folder called Particles and Prefabs, as we'll be making a few of these in this video. We can then delete the one from our scene, as we've got a prefab that will be spawning in when the enemy is destroyed. Along with our particle effect of random robot debris, I also want to create some parts of the robot that are going to go flying when he dies. So I'll have like a monitor and wheel that kind of go shooting off into the sky and bounce around after he's destroyed. To do this, I'm just going to start by dragging in my wheel. I'll let a circle collider and kind of just resize that, as well as a rigid body so that it actually falls down to earth and bounces around once it's spawned into the game. I'm also just going to quickly create a 2D physics material, which I'm going to call friction. I'll give this full friction, and I'm going to apply it to the rigid body of my robot wheel so that it doesn't go sliding across the surface of my world after it spawns in, but actually has some friction. Next, I'm just going to set this to a item layer. If you don't have one, you can just add that layer. I'm also going to select my robot and add a new layer for them as well. I'm going to put my robot onto an enemy layer. Don't forget after creating the layer to actually make sure your enemy goes to that layer. And I'm just going to do it for the parent object. Now the reason we're doing this is because in our project settings, if you head to Physics 2D, there is this layer matrix down at the bottom. This just allows us to select which layers are going to interact with each other. And I've set up my item so that it does not interact with obstacle or player layer. I'm also going to take off enemy. That way when the items spawn into the game, they won't bounce into the enemy or keep the enemy from being able to move around. While I'm here, I should also just note that the enemy does in fact need to detect the player. So I'm just going to click that back on. All right, next I'm just going to drag my robot wheel into my particles and prefabs folder. And now I'm just going to repeat this process for the monitor. 
we'll rename it, move it into place, add a box collider which we can resize to the right size, as well as a rigid body. I'll add my friction material and remember to add this to our item layer. We can now drag our robot monitor down into our particles and prefabs folders, and with that done we can delete them from the scene. We are ready to get started coding. So we'll just take a second here to head into our states folder where we can create a new c -sharp script. I'm just going to call this one death state. All right, as with all of our states, this is not a mono behavior. It inherits from enemy base state. We can also get rid of the start and update methods, right click on the name of our class, and generate our overrides. We'll just put them all in for now. I'm just going to take a sec to pop over into one of our other states to copy the constructor from there. This is the same in each state. The only difference is that we need to make sure the name here matches the name of the state we're in. Remember this just passes along the enemy script as well as the name of the animation so that we can trigger it on and off as we're entering and leaving. As I often like to do, I'm just going to move the animation triggers down to the bottom here as it just makes more sense to have enter at the top. All right, we'll just take a moment to initialize the new state. And we're going to make a public death state, which we'll just call death state. Then down below we can actually initialize it by making death state equal to a new death state. We'll pass along the script and let's call this animation name death. Now we're just going to head down to our damage method at the very bottom here. And right after we take damage, we're just going to add a little check to see whether or not our health has in fact gone down to zero or lower. If so, we're going to want to switch states to our death state. Now we run into a little problem here because at the moment we're going to go to our damaged state first. However, if we're dead, we can't get damaged. And so let's add an else statement here, and we'll just move our switch state to damage state only if we actually have health remaining. So as soon as we enter our death state, we're going to want to spawn in the hit particle as well as our death debris. However, I don't want to make a variable here. I want to try to store all of our information in one place. So I'm just going to head to our stat scriptable object, and this is where we can store the particles and death debris for our enemies. I'm just going to make a brand new header here. We'll call this one prefabs. And under this we'll make a public game object reference to the death particle, as well as a public game object array to our death debris. That way we can add as many parts of debris as we want for each enemy. Now as soon as we enter our death state, we want to instantiate our death particles and death debris. However, rather than write that here in this piece of code, I want to make a multi-purpose instantiate code so that we can call it from different states. For example, we might have an enemy later on that we want to instantiate fireballs. We'll be able to then use this method for that as well. So let's go to enemy, head all the way down to the bottom, and let's make a public void called instantiate, which will take in a game object called prefab. Inside of this method, then we can actually spawn in the items by going instantiate. We'll put prefab. It can spawn in at this transform.position, and we'll just put quaternion.identity as we don't want any special rotation on the objects when they spawn. Now back in our death state, we can just call enemy instantiate, and now we need to pass in the objects we're wanting to instantiate. We put this in our scriptable object, so we can just put enemy.stats.deathparticle. Now we can sort of do the same thing for our death debris. We can go enemy instantiate, and we'll look at our enemy.stats.deathdebris, However, this is going to cause a problem because our death debris is an array. It's more than one game object, and currently our instantiate method is just looking for one object at a time. We can fix this by making a for each loop and putting this inside of there so that we just call it once for each of our death debris. We'll then just make this so that it's for each variable, let's call them debris, that is in death debris. And we have to access that by going enemy.stats. Then down below, we can just simply say debris. And so we'll, distat, we'll instantiate the debris one at a time. All right, so back in Unity, we can click on our robot, go to his stat scriptable object, click on it down in our assets folder so we can see it. And we now have a spot for our death particle, which we can find in our particles and prefabs folder. And we can also get our pieces of death debris and just drag them onto this array. Now when we click, we can see both pieces of debris. With that done, we're far from perfect, but we should be able to actually make it so that when we destroy the enemy, he does indeed spawn in his debris and parts, but as you can see, he's not actually being destroyed, and so we can just keep stacking up our death debris. You may notice that it looks like our wheels aren't spawning in, but if you take a look in the hierarchy, you'll see they are there. They're just currently 
lining up behind the other objects. You could make it so that the items actually interact with each other, in which case they would stack up. If you want the items to stack up on top of each other, you can head into project settings and just enable items to interact with items. However, I find that later on we'll be adding some force to these items when they're spawned so they won't all land in the same place every time, and I don't think this will really be necessary. That said, if you do want the items to stack on top of each other, you can see here what that'll look like. Although not necessarily desirable, it is a lot of fun. Alright, so for this video there's two main things left to do. We want our enemy to disappear after he's defeated, and we also want to spawn in some items. Let's start with the enemy disappearing as that's the easiest. Now eventually I will add a video where we add a respawn effect, but for now let's just set the enemy.gameObject to be false. That'll just turn him off for now. And while we're here let's clean this method up a bit. I'm just going to create a new method called death particles, and we're going to grab all of this instantiate stuff and put it inside of there. We can pop down to the bottom to actually make our private void death particles, and then we can just paste those functions inside of there. That cleans things up nicely. While we're here, let's also add our drop items method, which we can create right below the death particles. This is going to work very similar to what we did with our death particles, where we will call the instantiate method for each item we want to drop. So we'll just make it so that for each item drop in enemy.item drops, as we will put this in our enemy. The reason I won't put this in our stat scriptable object is that sometimes the same enemy will drop different items, and we want the ability to do that. So for each item drop in our item drops array, which we'll create in a moment, we want our enemy to instantiate that item drop. All right, let's make this array a thing. So in our enemy script, we can just create a new header item drop variables, as there will be a couple things we want to put here. First, let's make our public game object array called item drops. Make sure the name does match what we put in our death state. We'll set a public float for the drop force, as well as another public float for torque. Time to do a quick test to make sure we're on track. I'm just going to lock my inspector on my robot here so that it stays open, and I'm going to grab a whole bunch of item prefabs I made and drag them onto this item drops array. You can see them all showing up here. And these are just game objects. You can make your items however you like. So long as you've got game objects, you can drop them on here. And this will be unspectacular, but now when the enemy is destroyed, he will in fact spawn all of his debris as well as whatever items are on your list. All right, let's just make this look a little bit nicer. Ultimately, we'll make the effect something like what happens when I destroy this crate, where the items just drop up into the air and spread out from each other. Now to make that magic happen, we'll just head into our enemy script at the bottom in our instantiate method. And here, along with our game object prefab, we're going to add a float for force and a float for torque, so that we can have the items pop up in the air and spin. To do that, we have to actually speak to the rigid bodies on these items, and we can do that by going rigid body 2 d let's call it item RB, is equal to then we'll have our instantiate line, and at the end just add get component rigid body 2 d Now that we can speak to the rigid body, we just need to create a velocity at which we want these items to spawn. So we'll make a vector 2 called drop velocity. This will just be a new vector 2, and for our x value, we're going to make a random range between 0.5 and negative 0.5. And we want our y value to always go upwards, we'll just put a 1. We can close that up and multiply it by our force. All right, with that done, we can now tell our item's rigid body that we want to add force. For this, we'll just use our drop velocity, and we'll use force mode 2D impulse so that it gets a sudden burst of force upward. And with that done, we can add our torque using pretty much the exact same thing, so I'm just going to copy-paste this. We'll just change the add force to add torque, and instead of drop velocity, we'll just add our torque in here. Now, we're almost done, but if we pop back into our death state, we'll notice that we have a whole bunch of errors. Here we just need to make a couple of changes as we haven't been passing along our drop force or torque values. So let's just head down to drop items first of all, and here because our enemy has the drop force and torque variables, we can just put enemy.dropForce and enemy.torque. For the moment I'm just going to copy paste these same values in for instantiating the death particles and debris, though we'll change those up a little bit later. Now before we test that, just click on our enemy, make sure to add a drop force and torque. I'm going to add a little bit excessive drop force of 20 and a torque of 3. Also remember, since we are now relying on a rigid body for all of our instantiating, we need to make sure that all of our objects have one. So if you click on your particle, we're just going to put a rigid body on here. Otherwise we'll get an error when we test. All right, and now when we destroy the enemy, <laughs> we've got a lot of drop force, but you can see things spin nicely, explode in the air, that sort of thing. All that's left is to kind of tweak those values and get them feeling about right. 
If anyone's curious about my final settings, I just went into project settings and made it so that items do not collide with each other, as I like the way they look when they don't stack up on top of each other. I also went with a drop force of 5 at the end. Then inside of my death state, I also, rather than go with the same drop force and torque that I'm using for my items, I just set my death particle to a drop force of 1 and a torque of 0, so it really doesn't have any special pop-up in the air, it just kind of will appear. And then for my death debris, I kept the force up in the air, but decided to go with a slightly more powerful torque. I just thought it'd be fun if when you hit it, the objects spin a little bit more. All right, I actually just took that torque down a little bit. I ended up at a three, and it's actually looking pretty good. I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.